And uh, this is certainly not the news we want. As of 2 a.m., we're now getting our hourly updates. It has strengthened to a cat four in the matter of an hour. I mean, this thing is deepening and it's deepening fast. 130 mile per hour sustained winds. We're probably seeing gusts closer to 140, 150, and that's going to continue to encroach on the coast as we go through later today. Pressure has dropped to 949. This is not good news, uh, but this is what we expected. It is rapidly intensifying as we now have a category four, and this is within one hour. I woke up at midnight. It was a cat two. Two hours later, not even two hours later, it's a category four. It has increased that much as it makes its way towards the Louisiana coast. So uh, if you're just joining us here, it is just before 2 a.m. We've got an advisory in from the National Hurricane Center because the uh, the uh, hurricane hunters are in there and we're actually getting this data. This is true data we're getting and they have clocked at 130 mile per hour category four hurricane pressure at 949. It's sitting 100 miles south of the mouth of the river and it's moving at 15 miles per hour. It's probably going to slow down a few more miles per hour, but it is going to be moving at a rate that keeps it at a kind of a steady rate as we go into later today. So here's what we got to do. Uh, let's go and I want to look at and I want to give you a breakdown on when these uh, the worst winds could move into your area. Now we've bumped up the timing of this just a uh, hair or by by uh, quite a bit. We have it moving in now more of this uh, late morning and through the afternoon rather than this evening into tonight. So we've already got tropical storm force winds moving towards the coast here. The more damaging winds of 59 to 70 miles per hour will start to move towards the coast by uh, closer to sunrise. The core of the hurricane force winds. Now they're going to be near the center. Not everyone's going to experience that 130, but with this center tracking through the heart of southeast Louisiana, quite a few are quite a few of you could experience 110, 100 plus mile per hour winds as this moves on through. So this is at 7 a.m. We've got the worst of the winds uh, still down here in the Gulf, but encroaching encroaching on our coastal areas. Let's take it up in time here. This is going to be. Um, the hurricane force winds approaching, let's say Grand Isle, let's say down towards Port Fouchon as we go into uh, 10, 11 o'clock. That's when you will be at your worst. That's not when you should be hunkering down. You should be hunkering down about now on the coast. That's when the hurricane force winds start. They will continue to move up across the area here. And with this latest track, we do have the worst of the winds moving through parts of the New Orleans Metro, and this will be during the afternoon. So if you are not where to, you need to be in New Orleans by this morning, you got to get there because by this afternoon we will likely have and usually we're saying possibly it might happen. No, we're going to start using the word likely because this thing is already a category four and we do have that center going right through parts of Lafouche. But remember, if this thing jogs just 10 miles to the east, you got nearly the heart of the storm coming into the New Orleans Metro as a significant major hurricane where winds will be over 100 miles per hour. So if you lost power in Zeta, there's no doubt about it. You're going to lose power in this storm and probably a lot more people are going to lose power in this storm as it's going to be affecting a bigger area of those more intense winds. Now in the yellow here, you see our tropical storm force winds. That'll be on the Mississippi coast as we go throughout the afternoon. Still think you miss out on the worst winds on the coast, but we, then we got to turn our attention to the North Shore and the river parishes. So if you're in the river parishes, the worst part of it is also this afternoon going into this evening. We'll also be looking at um, <clears throat> excuse me, the worst of it getting parts uh, close to parts of the North Shore as we go into this afternoon and into this evening and then up towards Baton Rouge closer to sunset. So if I know people up in Baton Rouge are even watching us right now. We've got people evacuated all over the place, but the worst of the hurricane winds will move in towards Baton Rouge closer to seven, eight, nine o'clock. That will continue into this evening into tonight. And then look at this with the sped up timeline. Things will start to wind down after midnight tonight. So I think tonight we'll start to see some improvements with the wind, but then our attention's really got to turn to the rainfall threat. This thing's only moving. I, you you know, 15 miles an hour right now. It's probably going to slow down a little bit more anywhere between 10 to 15 miles per hour as it moves through. That's not terribly fast. It's not stalling out, but this means we will see most of today with heavy rainfall across our area and we will be watching for some flooding where we could see on average of 6 to 10 inches with isolated uh, 15 inches. So overall, that is the latest. If you're just joining us, uh, I know a lot of people are maybe waking up, checking in here. I want to go back over this really quick. We've got a category four now. It strengthened to a category four from a three to a four in about 30 minutes. 
uh, it, it's deeply, it's rapidly deepening, which means the pressure is dropping very quickly. And as the pressure drops, those winds will respond and they will speed up. So we've got a 949 millibar hurricane here. That's pretty significant. And that will continue to drop. It looks like with 130 mile per hour sustained winds. We don't have gush yet from the National Hurricane Center, but those are usually on the order of probably 10 miles per hour greater. They could be gusting to 140 and those could continue to go up. Well, that's the track we current have currently have in the center of that hurricane. Our radars are picking up on the eye is tracking right along that red line. So if that continues, this moves into parts where Fushan is right in the middle of that line. But remember the right side of the storm and really all sides near the eye of a category four hurricane are going to be awful. So this includes Terrebonne, Lafouche. It includes all of southeast Louisiana, especially south of the lake. So we'll just give you that. Uh, kind of broad scope of everyone is going to feel potentially in, uh, significantly impacts from this category four uh, storm. Let me before I leave you, let me go over the track because I know we got a lot of people now tuning in. Uh, the track of this thing really has not changed. We still have it. Uh, they have it as 130 mile per hour by this morning. It's already 130 mile per hour. So with the 4 a.m. update, which doesn't happen for another three hours. It'll be interesting to see, do they bump that up to maybe 140? It would still be a category four. You have to have, uh, for it to be a cat five, it has to have winds of about 157 miles per hour. And um, at this point, you know, splitting hairs, they're not a huge difference when you start talking about 140 plus mile per hour winds. So uh, either way you look at this, this is, not a, this is not a good thing for our coastal areas, which could see winds well over 130, 140. Uh, miles per hour. The hurricane hunters are still in there as uh, as we as we uh, continue to track this. The 130 mile per hour winds are what the hurricane hunters were detecting. They're still in there and we'll, we'll be watching to see if they uh, detect any stronger winds and it does look like it is still strengthening uh, at this point. So that is the latest as of 2 a.m. We're now probably going to start to get these hourly updates as uh, it gets closer and closer to making landfall, which will be later this morning and afternoon. The worst of it's going to be moving in through the afternoon hours now, not this evening. It's tonight this afternoon. So you've got to get to where you need to be. Don't be on the roads. If you're stuck in traffic right now, hopefully we don't have any traffic around here. But if you are past Lafayette, you're going to be OK here at this point. And if you're past Mobile, I think you're going to be OK as well. Peyton, these hourly updates, what will we learn there? Because we only hear the track how every couple hours. Yeah, so my rule of thumb is at this point, the track almost becomes we know what the track is going to be just by looking at radar and watching the trend. So you essentially babysit the storm in uh, okay. into the area. We did this with Zeta last year, and fortunately we have our radars which can extend hundreds of miles out into the Gulf of Mexico so we can see the eye of the storm. It's there. So and we can see there's the center line of the forecast track. And as long as it follows near that, you know, we know when it's going to be making landfall. We can also see how fast it's moving and how far it is. And uh, so the forecast track will come in. But really, once it gets to the radar and we have the path it's moving and we can watch it, we can see it visually with the radar, then we can walk it in and, and we kind of know that that track is, is set in stone. Right so now. what do you learn with these hourly updates? And it, it jumped to a four so quickly. Is there yep. any way it's going to jump to a five? You know, we were talking about this a couple days ago. I mean, Chris, nothing's out of the you know, it's everything's possible right now. Now, it would be quite dramatic for this thing to jump up to 157 miles per hour hurricane. It's happened. It can happen. Okay. They can rapidly uh, strengthen that quickly. Um, I don't want people to focus so much on, you know, that splitting that difference. There is, you know, a cat five is just absolutely catastrophic, right. but so is a category four. And with these hourly updates, we'll just know exactly what it's doing with its winds. So the hurricane okay. hunters, they will continue to fly this until it gets over land. Once it gets over land, the hurricane hunters will not go into it. It's not safe for them to fly through a hurricane over land. There's too many risks with that. So uh, they will continue to fly this up until landfall. So we will continue to get continuous data. They are sending in multiple planes right now. Now keep in mind, Keesler is uh, in Biloxi, right? So they've evacuated all their planes. So they're having to fly in from San Antonio. Wow. And we've got planes flying in. They've evacuated towards Florida and things like that. So they'll have multiple planes flying in this throughout the rest of the morning. And you even seem shocked and we knew that it would get to a category four, but this quickly did this yeah. happen sooner than you guys thought? You know, just from like a meteorological perspective, it's 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 just insane to see a storm strengthen this fastly. Can it happen? Yes. <laughs> We always talk about it happening. It usually doesn't happen, but mm. when you see it happening, when you and also when you have a category four storm sitting on your doorstep, I mean, 
it's kind of, it hits you that, oh my gosh, this is reality. So yeah. that's what I think it's so shocking that yes, this is actually Hopefully happening. people aren't sitting at home like, oh my gosh, I should have left. Hopefully everybody that needed to leave has left. I thought about that last night. I said, I, there's gonna be people who are sitting at home. I, I know it's gonna happen. And I, you know, you pray they're okay, you hope they're okay, but they're gonna be sitting at home in these winds later today. And they're gonna think, oh my gosh, I wish I would have left. Yeah. And, and Peyton, they, they talk about like a tornado, it sounds like a train. Is that what it sounds like for a hurricane too? Yeah, I mean, um, I don't remember if y'all remember Zeta last year. I do, that was horrible. Was scary. And you were saying that this is gonna be even worse. Oh, this will be magnitudes Oof. worse, um, especially wow. for our coastal areas. I mean, yes, we did see a category three storm, but that was very confined to around Cocodry. Uh, and kind of the Port Fouchon, Terrebonne Bay area. This could be a little bit more widespread and we could see those more intense winds move up into the metro. So, um, you know, that was certainly scary. Think of all the people that lost power in Zeta. Right. Think of all the people that are likely gonna lose power in this. It'll probably be more expansive, we imagine. You also mentioned that Zeta was a three but felt more like a one when it got to the metro area. So if yeah. this is a four, what is it gonna feel like when it's closer to the metro area? Oh, it'll probably be weakening to a three or a two. But still very strong. But, but, excuse me, extremely, extremely strong. It, um, it will rapidly weaken once it gets inland here. Uh, and it'll probably still be up to around a two or a one to Baton Rouge. So that's winds of about 100 miles per hour, maybe 95 to 100 miles per hour with some higher gusts possible. So uh, this could be the strongest hurricane that has impacted some of our areas directly um, in many, many, many decades. And you keep talking yeah. about the pressure dropping as a factor in it getting stronger. What factors it is making it strengthen so quickly? What other factors? It just has to do with the environment. So the the pressure dropping is a reflection of its strengthening. Okay. The the pressure is not is Causing what's strengthening it. it. Exactly. Okay. The pressure is dropping is telling us that it is strengthening. So as the pressure drops, all that means is that it's breathing. That means it's not experiencing really uh, significant wind shear. We also know the Gulf of Mexico is boiling hot, that's a given. So the environment this is in right now is just that conducive for it to strengthen, and that's what the pressure is telling us. So as the pressure drops, the winds will rise. That's how it works. Uh, thank you for continuing to watch here as we track Hurricane Ida. We just got the 5 a.m. update. We're getting hourly updates now, and the hurricane continues to grow stronger. It is a 145 mile per hour sustained storm now. That is a category four, and it's only 80 miles south of Grand Isle. So time has run out in Grand Isle, and uh, tropical storm can hurricane conditions will continue to move on in through the rest of the morning and get there by around lunchtime. There's the track. Look at this number, though. This is the number that's just shocking. I mean, it's all shocking, but sustained winds 145, gusting to 165, that could go up to around 170 miles per hour. That type of wind it will destroy any structure. And look at the Northwest movement. It hasn't slowed down. It's still moving at its constant rate, which has been about 15 miles per hour, which has been the case for the past about 24 hours. So you can see there that red line I've drawn on here is the path of this thing. And we are extremely concerned and uh, we're not being dramatic here, folks. This is a category four. This is a strong category four storm that's gonna be impacting parts of Southeast Louisiana. The current track of it does take it straight up through Homa and Thibodeau. Earlier, it was more along LA-1 here. It shifted a little bit, but these minor shifts are expected. This could wobble back this way a little bit. It could wobble this way, and it could wobble back and forth all the way up until landfall. So the key message here is that the Bayou Parish is Terrebonne, Lafouche, especially Lower Terrebonne, Lower Lafouche, Lower Jefferson, Grand Isle, and even Plaquemines, with this current track and forecast are gonna get absolutely hammered by a strong category four storm with winds 145 miles an hour. That could go up even more. Now, a lot of people have been wondering, is this gonna be a cat five? A category five would be 157 miles an hour. So it has about 10 more miles an hour to go there. No guarantee it does it, but anyway, you look at it, this is a, gonna be a devastating storm for areas. Pressure is 946. That's what we'll be watching. When pressure levels off, we'll probably see the intensity and the winds level off. But anyway, it is uh, gonna be moving on in. So we've got showers, outer bands moving on through the area. These will produce some gusty 40 to 50 mile per hour winds. We're starting to get in our tropical storm conditions down along the coast. Hurricane conditions will start very soon down there along the coast as well. So Ida it is intensifying and here's the latest track. There it is moving up to the north, making its turn. It'll be near Baton Rouge by tonight. We've been showing you the radar here and uh, we've been tracking just how big that eye is. And it's not a giant eye. Let me erase this here because I want to I want to do this. I haven't done it in about an hour. The eye itself is uh, in between about 20 and 30 miles. 
in diameter. It's actually about 20 miles. It looks like it maybe shrunk just a little. So um, overall, the eye is not giant, but the worst part of the hurricane is going to be around that eye wall, especially on this side. This is where we're clocking those 165 mile per hour wind gusts are going to be right there uh, on the eastern side of that eye wall. Now showing you the track here, let me time it out for you and when you could see the worst conditions moving on into your area. The track of this thing really has not shifted over the past two or three days really. Uh, there they have it making landfall. Notice as they have it at 145 this afternoon. So it'll be interesting to see does it continue to intensify up until landfall around lunchtime? We'll say around noon or does it uh, uh, kind of cap off or try to weaken some as it gets over this continental shelf. Either way, it looks like it's going to be a strong category for it. landfall. We're just going to have to watch it uh, and and see what it ends up doing. Then it makes the turn. Excuse me around midnight to uh, noon or around midnight just after midnight. It's near Baton Rouge probably still as a category one storm, so it's going to take it about 12 hours to go from a four to a one. That means it will be a hurricane over pretty much all of southeast Louisiana as we go through this afternoon and we will be dealing with the worst of it through the afternoon hours for inland areas. The coast will be dealing with the worst of it this morning and around lunchtime, and it's not going to stop. It's going to linger all the way into this evening into to parts of tonight. So uh, to give you an idea on some of the other impacts and um, the timing of when the worst could be moving in, let's time it out for you. That's 8 a.m. The worst of it heading towards our coast by 10 to 11 o'clock. There's the eye wall moving into the coastal areas. Winds start to really pick up in Homa, Thibodeau in the New Orleans area about lunchtime. Could start to see some gusts 70, 80, 90, 100 plus miles an hour south of the lake closer to lunchtime. And then this will continue to just spread over the area as we go through the afternoon hours with wind gusts. Look at all these 100 plus miles mile per hour wind gusts 127 130 125 up to nearly uh, the 80s and 90s in New Orleans and that will probably only get higher. The big question right now is uh, the eye wall the eye where does it go? The closer you are to this eye and this part of the eye the eye wall eastern part that's where the worst part of the hurricane is going to be with regard to wind. If that eye wall stays just to the west of New Orleans maybe we don't get the 110 mile per hour winds but we're going to get probably 80 to 90. So that'll be the big question. But really, if you are in New Orleans to the west, there's a pretty good shot. You see winds over 110, 120 later on through the afternoon and into the evening. This is at 6, 7 o'clock later today. The eye is just there in between Homa and Baton Rouge, still gusting over 100 in parts of the river parishes by sunset. And then that's when it will really start to get bad on the North Shore. The North Shore will really start to see winds pick up uh, closer to sunset and going into the midnight hour. This is at midnight to paint the picture. We're going to be dealing with this all day long and even into tonight. We will start to see wind gusts over 70 to 80 to 90 miles an hour up in parts of the North Shore. Notice in Mississippi, not as bad. Maybe some wind gusts to 60 to 70 uh, to 80, but uh, not into the 100 area. And then this is waking up Monday morning. About 7 o'clock on Monday, Ida is lifting up north of Macomb. We're getting some breaks in the heaviest rain, but we've still got strong winds of 70, uh, 60 to 50 to 70 miles per hour. So it may not be until Monday afternoon before winds are below tropical storm force. That's when it's safe to get out and do stuff or uh, be on bridges and things like that. You don't be driving on any bridges when winds are this strong. Now something else we needed to talk about here. There, this a category four storm like this. Every single threat is a big threat for someone. The surge values have gone up here. We've bumped them up to 12 to 16 feet as you go down into Lower Jefferson, Lower Lafourche, and on the west bank of Plaquemines. This will be funneling up into Jefferson Parish here. Think of Jean Lafitte and Lafitte down here. Could see significant surge of up to 16 feet. Up into St. Charles Parish on this side of the river towards Luling and Booty. That water will be coming up. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Thibodeau, Homa will be on that dividing line of the track. We're thinking 8 to 12 feet now for Terrebonne Parish. But if that track shifts a little bit this way, we could see more of a 16 foot surge for Homa and up into Terrebonne Parish. It just depends on that track. 8 to 12 feet. This is a little bit higher for the east bank of Plaquemines and up into St. Bernard. Think Wyclowski, Hope Dell and Shell Beach. Also 7, 8 to 12 feet for areas uh, as you get into right outside Lake Pontchartrain. We're talking outside the levee protection system in New Orleans, um, out in western, eastern New Orleans, uh, Orleans Parish, excuse me. And then in the lake, 5 to 8 feet. We bumped that up just a little bit. 4 to 6 feet in Lake Maurepas, and then 4 to 7 feet for Harrison County. Still going with 8 to 12 feet for our friends over in Hancock County, up into Bay St. Louis, and especially up into the shoreline area and up into the Jordan River, all the way past I-10 could see uh, some inundation come on up. So storm surge, 
This is devastating storm surge. You couple that with wind gusts 160, 170 miles an hour, and uh, that's absolutely catastrophic damage for areas down there along the coast. This is also going to be a big deal. Our rain chances and our rain totals, we've actually, we're growing more confident that this could be a big flooding event as well. And I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, what are we going to, we're dealing with surge, wind, and flooding potential? Yes. 15 uh, inches of rainfall possible, um, is certainly for areas just towards the east of that eye. I mean, you're talking about the eye going from here to here, taking a whole you know, afternoon, 12 hours to do it. So it's possible it rains pretty much all afternoon. It could be very heavy, and that's why our 15 inches is certainly reasonable. Now that, of course, in New Orleans would lead to flooding with regard to uh, inside the levees. I think what's going to happen here, we're, you know, we're not really concerned with the surge uh, coming inside the levees in New Orleans, but the flooding potential from the heavy rainfall. So you, the times, especially if you stay and you look out your door and you see water coming up in the roads, it's more than likely thanks to rainfall and the pumps trying to keep up with it. So that's a major concern with flooding across the city. If your car's here, park it high. 10 inches of rainfall seems like a very good bet for a lot of areas, but it does seem like 15 inches is in the realm of possibilities, and we could see areas that pick up over 15 inches of rainfall. That's a big concern. The other problem is we got to talk about the North Shore rivers here, and we're not going to have a great idea on what they're going to do until we get uh, and see where that rain is actually falling. But a lot of these rivers are in a flood warning now, and if you do live along one of the rivers on the North Shore, uh, you've got to plan for worst case scenario here in these types of situations. You're talking maybe 10 to 15 inches of rain added on to five to eight inches or five to eight feet of storm surge rise in the lake. That's not going to allow those rivers to drain into Lake Pontchartrain. So you will see a prolonged period of flooding along those rivers. And then, of course, the wind threat. This is what uh, we just we typically aren't extremely concerned with wind with systems. But when you start getting into major hurricanes, cat fours, this is going to be a big deal. Wind gusts near the coast and right near that eastern eye wall are going to be about over 160 near the center of that storm. And then it's very possible a lot of areas in this white sea at least 110 mile per hour wind gusts. Eric. And, and Peyton, for people who are just joining us now, you went to bed, it was a category two, we get up, it's a category four. Is, is this track almost in stone now? Is there anything that could drive it farther to the west or bring it closer to the east to us? Uh, wobbles. And speaking but of besides wobbles, 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 wobbles no. can mean yeah, right. No, I mean this. It, it, if anything, I mean the track is coming to southeast Louisiana, and it's just where does it make landfall? Terrebonne Parish or Plaquemines? That's still a possibility. Anywhere between there, it's still a possibility of landfall. But it's coming on in here. And do you notice this, Eric? Do you see it kind of? going to the east of this this yeah. is the forecast line so what does that mean does that mean it continues to track more like this maybe it comes closer and makes landfall right in grand isle and plaquemines parish takes the brunt of it that would not be good for new orleans that would put that eastern eye wall right over the city this afternoon it's also possible this wobbles this way and then it decides to do this and it comes up towards terrebonne but the track at this point it's coming here yeah and, and the fact that this is happening on the 16th anniversary of hurricane katrina is is not lost yeah. to anybody. I mean, the 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 uh, a storm like this, a Category Four Hurricane uh, Katrina was a Category Five, but it hit as a Category Three. Yeah. Anyway, this could weaken when it comes ashore. It is possible. Um, you know, it, the trends have not been weakening at all. That radar just went out. Um, the trends have not been weakening at all. Now it is possible it kind of caps off and we'll see what it does. But um, right now there's no indication that it is going to weaken. The wind shear is not terribly high and it's just so organized. I mean, that is the that is so impressive to see as a hurricane. The structure of it is just a classic uh, devastating, you know, category four hurricane. Yeah. And depending on where it does make landfall, finally, if it's a real marshy area, that's not, that's not going to weaken the storm any. You know, we are, it's not. This is going to take its time. I was showing you it's going to make landfall, we'll say, here about noon today. And then by midnight, it's going to be by Baton Rouge. So within that scale, traveling from the coast to Baton Rouge, it's going to be going from about a four to a one. So it's not going to, it'll weaken, but it's going to take all day to go from a four to a three. It'll probably stay a two and a one much longer. It'll probably go from a four to a three pretty quickly. Yeah, guys, um, I just, honestly, this is, it's shocking to believe how fast this thing is strengthening. Look at the current winds. This is still a category four, 150 mile per hour sustained winds now. A category five is 157. This is close to becoming a category five here. And look at our pressure, 935 millibars. 
I've never seen pressure drop so fast in a hurricane. Uh, it's happened, but I just can't think of any and 75 miles south of Grand Isle uh, at this point. So it's still moving northwest at 15. This thing is on the verge of becoming a category five hurricane as it makes its way towards the north. Now, is it possible this continues to strengthen? It is the trends we've seen since 1 a.m. It is just crazy how fast this thing has intensified as it's made its way towards the Louisiana coast. The track still brings it into parts of Lower Terrebonne, Lower Lafourche, and going over into Lower Jefferson to near Plaquemines. Anywhere in here, landfall remains possible. The eye itself has been running just a hair to the north and northeast of it, so it's possible that the exact eye or the center of it tracks closer to uh, Lafourche Parish, maybe even up and towards the Grand Isle area. This could be a strong cat four on the verge of becoming a five, making landfall in southeast Louisiana. We have never had a hurricane this strong with going back at least to the early 1900s, uh, this strong making landfall. Betsy was 140 miles per hour. The great uh, that one that Doug was talking about was 145 miles per hour. This could very well be one of the strongest hurricanes we've ever experienced through parts of our area. Eric. And, 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 and explain just why that drop in Millibar is so important for not just the intensity, but the depth of this storm. Yeah, so I was just talking to you with this off air. And um, so as pressure drops, the winds are going to respond. As pressure is dropping, um, winds naturally pick up. Low pressure here and that high pressure in the air is just funneling down into this thing. Think of it as uh, you're pulling down on a balloon and the water's rushing in. So the deeper it goes, the faster the water is going to go and the faster the winds are going to go. Now, I, this interesting fact a, a meteorologist friend had posted, this is Ida's central pressure has dropped 50 millibars, 50 millibars in 22 hours. That qualifies this as rapid deepening. Now, rapid deepening is more, ex is, uh, more extensive uh, than rapid intensifying. Now, rapid de uh, deepening with that pressure dropping, uh, get this, only 11 hurricanes on record in the Atlantic have deepened at 50 millibars in 22 hours or faster. And Peyton, quickly ex explain why that is so significant. Uh, because, a, well, one thing, uh, one, it's nearly a cat five. Two, there's a difference, there's a big difference between a weakening hurricane at landfall and a strengthening hurricane at landfall. A strengthening hurricane at landfall is going to have a much bigger punch than a weakening one. It's ramping up all the way until landfall, and that is very possible with this storm as it continues to move towards the north and west. So at this point, um, you know, we've been talking about, we talked about this a couple days ago. People were saying, is a cat five possible? We said it's not out of the question, and it's not. I mean, it's only seven miles per hour off, and the way this thing has strengthened all the way since 1 a.m. when I came in, it was a category two, and then it was a three, and then it was a four an hour later, and now it's a strong four. Uh, this thing will likely continue to intensify as it makes its way towards our coastal areas. Area. And, and what are the chances that this thing could still move a little. I'm, we're talking about the wobbling. We know it's going to wobble yeah. back and forth. But when, when, when the winds get this strong, is that wind field expanding any around that eye? Yeah, so the wind field's naturally expanding. It, it contracts and expands in a hurricane. One thing that could happen with this one, and this happens in really intense hurricanes, they go through these things called eye wall replacement cycles. And um, that's what happened to Katrina. So Katrina was a cat five, and remember it weakened. It went through an, uh, an eye wall replacement cycle during that process, and that weakens it. And what it does is it allows that wind field to spread out, and then that eye has to contract again. So as you've seen ice skaters, they spin around, and when they bring their arms in, they go faster, right? So a hurricane's essentially the same. When the eye is bigger here and it's contracting, it's gonna go faster and faster and faster. And then you'll get a new eye wall forming and that's the replacement cycle. And then that new eye wall will be bigger. The winds will weaken just a little bit and then it will contract back down and the winds will strengthen. I think we got a tornado warning or a tornado watch. I wanna check on something real quick. Okay, we have a tornado watch. So we're gonna be watching for that over the next, uh, throughout today is possibly isolated tornadoes. So that watch will be in effect for the area. Uh, today, so we'll be watching not only the hurricane conditions, but of course any of these bands could produce some spin. -offs. And and again, with the speed this thing is traveling right now, uh, how much time does it have to intensify to a, a Cat Five, or or change course any? It's got about five to six more hours over water. It's running into our shallow 
our shallow waters. Now the waters out here are pretty shallow, right? Uh, as you go out, you've, you're not into the deep ocean water. So it'll be interesting to see, do we get any upwelling? And upwelling is when an intense hurricane like this that's moving at a fairly, it's not Holland, but it's not Stalin. And uh, it can upwell some water, that cooler water, and that can sometimes decrease it or cap off the intensification process. It's possible it does that, but it's not a guarantee and it's not doing it right now. And so. are those waters warmer than some of the deeper water? Because it is the surface. Oh yeah, this water up here gets to the upper 80s to near 90 degrees. And so that's not good either. No, it's an immediate uh, hot temperature, but um, you know, when you're talking about warm temperatures and the waters, you gotta have great wind shear or low wind shear, not a lot of dry air, and we obviously don't have that. So that all coupled together is why we are seeing this. And we did expect it to intensify rapidly up until landfall. So this is all expected. It's just a little bit stronger than what we uh, were thinking it was gonna get. And Payne, you said a moment ago, we've never had a storm this strong make landfall in Louisiana, which I think is such a strong statement from a place that has seen yeah. Katrina's and Betsy's. Meg was just naming some of the big storms that she's been through. Everybody's looking for a comparison. So what is yeah. the strongest storm we've had make landfall? In Louisiana, it was Laura last year, actually. It was 150, so it was the same as what it's at right now. Mm. The um, In our area, going back to at least, and I, off the top of my head, I can't think of what the if. We've had two 1850 hurricanes that were pretty significant, but I can't think of the names or the speeds. But going back to at least the 1915 that Doug was mentioning, the Great Hurricane in 1915 took a similar path as Ida. Betsy also is going to take, or this is taking a similar path as Betsy. Betsy was a cat four, but it was 140 miles an hour at landfall. Wow. Uh, the 1915 one, I believe, was 145 miles per hour at landfall. So we have never had, um, at least in going back through the 1900s, a 150 plus mile per hour uh, hurricane and we've actually never had a category five make landfall in Louisiana. No. Wow. We, Camille made landfall in Mississippi, but it was in Bay St. Louis, Waveland, so uh, it didn't classify as here. And, and it kind of skirted the, the eye wall of Camille skirted down here towards Buris, but the actual eye did not make landfall the center of it. And I know you don't expect it to shift very much, if at all, before it makes landfall, but I know you were also surprised that the speed is up to 150 so fast. Yeah. Would that help shift it at all? The speed, uh, sometimes, you know, the speed of these things in the long term, we watch the strength and, and what that's going to do to the steering pattern. This thing could curve a little bit sooner. That is certainly possible. We've seen that with hurricanes in the past. Uh, but right now, if you look at our trends, it's still running right on the right side. So I think it's headed more towards Lafourche and Lower Jefferson. Um, it may wobble though, and we talk about these wobbles, you, you know, wobbles are important at this at this point. They're not important when you're talking about the forecast five days out because we can't detect the wobbles. But when you get to this, this point, you really got to watch and see how this thing winds its way towards the coast. It could still make landfall near Plaquemines, Lower Jefferson, Grand Isle, Lafourche is here, Port Fouchon. Port Fouchon's right dead line in the center of it right there. And then so is Homa in the current forecast. And, and, and Peyton, when we talk about it intensifying like this, D does that mean a bigger storm surge? Will the storm surge uh, estimates increase because of this? Yeah, they would. Now, the storm surge is dependent on a couple different things. It has to do with uh, a couple different, about three different factors, really. The two we're watching are the intensity, the how fast the winds are, but the structure of the wind field. Eric, we were talking earlier about why Katrina was such a devastating storm with surge, but it was only a cat, I say only, it was a category three at landfall. Yeah, it's and, it was, and it was east of us. We were on the west side. Yeah. yeah, it's because the wind field was giant. It was almost, I think, double of what we got here. And that's because it was a giant category five in the Gulf of Mexico, and that wind field just had so much time to grow. This wind field, it's a decent wind field, but it's not nearly the size of Katrina. So the bigger the wind field, the more water it can push, but the stronger the winds, also the more water it can push. So uh, it kind of is a trade-off there, but more so the stronger the winds get, the storm surge will go up. That's why we've seen our estimates increase to 16 feet now. And when you, and when you, when you talk about the, the, the intensity of this wind, as you said, we've never had a Cat 5 hit uh, Louisiana. When, you, when you've got, even if it stays a strong hurricane or a strong category four at 150 mile an hour, sustained winds, yeah. that just wreaks havoc on everything in its path. Yeah, it does. And you know, the strongest winds, this, this 150, maybe it ends up being 155, that would still be a Cat 4, or your gusts, which are 165 to 170, that's gonna be uh, near the center of the storm on the eastern eye wall here, 
as it makes landfall. So the most intense part is going to be, I mean, not everyone's going to see 150 mile an hour winds that will decrease pretty quickly, but there is a good chance a lot of our area does see over 100, maybe 120 mile per hour wind gusts. So you got to prepare for that. I hope you've prepared for it because you're basically out of time uh, at this point, Eric. All right, it is uh, 11 a.m. here. Thanks, Paul. We've got some, uh, you just saw those live shots, how dramatic it is, and the worst is yet to come across our area. Now, we just got the 11 a.m. update. It's a 150 mile per hour uh, hurricane, still a category four, gust to 185, and it looks like it's holding steady. And there you are, 933 millibars. It's sitting 25 miles southeast, or excuse me, southwest of Grand Island. I just took a measurement here. It's about 13 to 11, 11, 13 miles just towards the uh, southeast of Porfushan. So Porfushan doesn't pop up here, but it's right there. It's going to be 13 miles down. And remember, the center is uh, when it makes landfall is when the center makes its way across land. And it's not the northern eye wall, it's that part right there. So when the center of the eye moves over Port Fouchon, we will have a landfall. And uh, that will probably happen by around noon, maybe a little bit before noon. With a category four, 185 mile per hour winds. Those 185 mile per hour winds are going to be right in here. And that is going to just hammer Port Fouchon and heading up into Leeville Golden Meadow. Those areas are going to see significant damage from not only the winds, but also the storm surge that's going to come in with this. Grand Isle is also going to get. And we kind of got a, um, a double eye wall thing going on here. We've got this eye, and then you've got like a secondary eye, right? So a Grand Isle may be not getting a lot of rain right now, but winds are still gusting over 100 miles per hour there. And remember, the winds are wrapping up into this thing. So this is all storm surge coming on in at this point. So the conditions are continuing to get worse down there. They're in the thick of it at this moment. Homa, it's about to kick off. Um, New Orleans, our strong winds are moving on in. And everyone's phones in New Orleans and down south of New Orleans just went crazy with that noise. Uh, they sent in an alert about the intense winds that are moving on through. And to put this in perspective, you just saw those live shots. And we're gusting to 60 miles an hour right now at the lake. And the worst of this is still... Uh, a ways away from at least the worst part of the actual hurricane is not going to be moving in probably for another couple of hours. So it's going to steadily get worse as we go through the afternoon. And then by two, three o'clock, we could be dealing with some really rough conditions in New Orleans. We could really start to deal with some rough conditions in Homa in the next hour or two. Same thing for Thibodeau all the way through Lafouche Parish is just getting hammered by this. And that's the center of the eye that we're going to be watching. So the eye is going to travel this way. But remember, all this is coming with it. So this is what's going to be moving up towards New Orleans and the entire New Orleans Metro as we go through the remainder of today. And it is not going to be in a hurry to get on out. Now it is moving. It is not stalled. It's moving northwest at 13 miles per hour. But that just means we're going to have it in our area for quite some time through the rest of today, even into tonight. So buckle up. It's coming and it's only going to get worse through the day. Now, as we look at uh, on the North Shore, you don't have a you don't have a whole lot going on. It's a little gusty up here, but just a few showers. This will be uh, moving up to the north later this afternoon as well, and you'll see conditions really uh, go downhill up there. So here is the latest on all of our advisories, and I want to make sure uh, we've got the correct storm surge information, but we're still thinking about uh, 12 to all the way up to 16 <clears throat> feet of storm surge as we go into uh, where we're, we're looking at landfall here in southeast Louisiana. And I'm going to try to get this graphic pulled up for you so I can show you. Uh, but the storm surge is going to be at its highest over the next couple of hours down there in uh, Lower Jefferson and Lower Lafouche Parish as that storm surge blows in on the eastern side of that that eye wall. Now just towards the west, as you get closer to Homa uh, and Thibodeau, you're looking at the 8 to 12 foot storm surge uh, across those areas. So here we go. Now I got it for you. and. Uh, the lake is still expected to be about five to eight feet, and that lake is already coming up. Now, what you saw there just now uh, with our live shots from Meg and Michelle, that's pretty normal for a tropical storm. You could go out there, any tropical storm, and you're going to see water coming up there uh, and crossing into the, the low-lying areas on the other side of the levee. But uh, as it continues to go up, as we get more into that five to eight feet range, it could be a little bit higher. But I think our most significant problems with storm surge in the lake are going to be on the southeast side 
down towards St. John Parish, going into St. Charles Parish, and on the western side up towards Tangipahoa Parish, uh, where because our winds are funneling in this way, and they're going to continue to funnel in that way, and then eventually they'll be out of the south, so you'll be looking at more of a problem on the north shore. So yeah, we're going to see surge rise here on New Orleans, but with this storm, we don't have a northerly component. That's why Katrina was so bad for New Orleans because the wind field was wrapping the winds around on this side and they were pummeling down into the city. We don't have that with Ida. Ida's winds are more out of this way. They're kind of out of this. They are out of the southeast or the north, the northeast right now going southwest. That will be switching though more to the north later on uh, tonight. So that's why, uh, you know, the concern for storm surge in New Orleans itself on the east bank remains very, very low. Now the West Bank is going to be watching this come on up and then this will go all the way up until it runs into our levee protection system on the West Bank. Jean Lafitte, Lafitte, these areas could see significant storm surge rise. Uh, this morning we did have a reporter down there embedded with them uh, in their, their safety area. So uh, maybe we can get a report from her if she's still down there, or get a phoner and see what's going on with them and see if they're seeing any storm surge come up. That would be a, a good source to see what exactly is happening. We know it's coming in. We just don't know how high it's gotten yet or how uh, much, uh, how far it's come into Jefferson Parish at this point. Now the winds are continuing to be a huge problem and they will continue to be a huge problem through the rest of today. It still seems reasonable that we could be dealing with gusts over 160 near the coast, especially for Port Fouchon and down here towards Leeville. That could be the worst of it and even Grand Isle. Plaquemines Parish is probably closer to 130 mile per hour wind gust. And then as you get inland, we're looking on, you know, high wind gusts for home at Thibodeau still. Over the next couple of hours, you could start to see some wind gusts approach 100 and then continue to be over 110, maybe 20 as we go through the afternoon. New Orleans, it's all about this track. If it takes this track, we will definitely see parts of the western metro get in that outer eye wall. That could produce winds over 100 miles per hour. If it jogs just a little hair to the east, that shifts that wind axis into much of New Orleans. And so it's just too close of a call. We need everyone to be preparing for over 110 mile per hour winds just in case. Now, excuse me, by this afternoon and evening, it's making its way up through the river. It's up to the north and then the worst winds will start to move into the North Shore later this afternoon and going into tonight. This isn't going to wind down anytime soon. It's only going to get worse for the rest of today. You got to be prepared and be somewhere very safe. You need to be in a sturdy structure. This is a type of hurricane that you've got to ride out just like you would ride out a tornado somewhere if you had to. You'd be in a sturdy structure. You'd be away from windows. You would be in an interior closet if it gets that bad and just put as many rooms and, uh, and walls between you and the outside to make sure you are safe from the wind. Also make sure you're safe from the water. And I do want to mention um, also the flooding threat. This has got every threat with it. This hurricane has the flooding, the storm surge, the wind. We've had a few tornado warnings, but that is coming to an end. That threat at least is. And uh, the, what we're really concerned about are any of these bands tonight and they could produce some significant rainfall amounts if they start to train and these will likely train. So it will start raining. It's already started raining. It's going to continue to raining uh, and continue to spread up over the area through the rest of today and it's going to continue into parts of tonight. So it could be raining for the next 12 to 16 hours in some spots that is going to start to add up quickly and we could be ending up with 10 to maybe 15 plus inches of rain. Some models are very aggressive with this rainfall. Some have shown over 20 to 25 inches in a few spots. It's possible it could happen somewhere and uh, that's why uh, hopefully you got your car somewhere safe in New Orleans or any low lying area because now you're run out of time because it's too dangerous to go out in these winds and they're going to continue to just increase across the area. So you need to be uh, I know we say this word a lot. Maybe it's annoying. I don't know. Hunker down. You need to be somewhere safe throughout the remainder of this hurricane if you did not. Uh, evacuate and Peyton you still think that Port Fouchon is going to be where landfall officially yeah. is uh, noted. And I how, do. How close are we right now to Port Fouchon with the eye of that storm? So they're getting into the eye right now, but it, we got to wait. The Hurricane Center, what they do for landfall is they wait for the center of the center, the center of the eye to make landfall. And so that's not going to happen for probably another half and uh, 45 minutes or so. So you can see there, Port Fouchon is absolutely in the worst of it right now. Winds could be 185 miles an hour in Port Fouchon right now. I don't have a gauge yeah. um, down there. I'm going to need to try to find one. But uh, this part right here is 10 tenths. There's the middle of the eye. And then that'll be moving in. It's moving at 13 miles an hour. So it's sitting about 
uh, if this is Port Fouchon, it's sitting about 13 miles off the coast, so about an hour. It would yeah, make is land. there anything that could slow this thing down and then make the, the rain train over us longer? Mm -hmm. um, it is slowing down, and it's going to continue to slow down a little bit as it makes that turn. It's not going to stall. There's a trough coming from up north, and it's going to pick it up. But um, it could get down to maybe 10 miles an hour later today. There's, there's, that's definitely in the forecast for it yeah. to slow down. And that's just going to prolong this over our area. And this, that, this part, that big old area to the east, that just looks um, like a solid sheet of rain. That is going to be over our area for the next 12 hours or so, yeah. maybe even beyond that. And that's the wet side. The east side is always the wet side, yeah. of the, usually the wet side of the storm. It is, and this is where the big flooding threat's going to be. The flooding threat's not going to be as high for Morgan City or Baton Rouge, I don't think. They'll still get a lot of heavy rain, but not as much as we're going to get. But um, the west side of a category, category 4 hurricane is still just as dangerous. Winds over here could sure. still be over 120 miles an hour. So Morgan City, Baton Rouge are still likely going to take a pretty hard hit from this. But this one is particularly wet on that east side, though. Yeah, most, I mean, generally most Generally are. they are, yeah. But We've yeah, seen some with the west side heavier. It is, and it all has, that has to do with a couple of other things. But yeah, you've kind of got two eye walls here. You've got an outer eye wall and that inner eye wall. And um, what we'll be watching in New Orleans, we're probably not going to get into that one right there, but we'll yeah. get into this western. And, and for, for Orleans and Jefferson, I mean, the, the, the slower that thing moves through and the longer it's, it's over us uh, is the worst for us for the flooding. And of course the winds, because the winds are going to knock down power lines, trees, yeah. etc. Yeah, it's just going to be a mess out there. I, you absolutely, like, don't even have the idea of getting on the road later today. Um, of course, we're not leaving the station. We're all staying here even when we're off air. You've got to hunker down where you're at. You've got to stay there because it could be too dangerous to get out in, on the roads. You might, there may be power lines, things like that. There may be trees. You don't want a tree to fall on you when you're driving. We've heard of um, uh, tragedies that happen when people get out and a tree falls on their car while they're driving. We've got a lot of big trees here. So uh, it's just a good idea to stay put for the time. When do you think the winds will start subsiding here in the metro area? Below tropical storm force? Yes. Not until tomorrow afternoon. Maybe. Okay. Wow. And then we've got about 24 more hours of That's a winds long like time. what we've got out there right now. And Peyton, we are less than an hour from it making landfall. I thought the track would be pretty much set by now, but so it's interesting to hear. I mean, it's set. It's, okay. I mean, it's not going to make any crazy jog to Lafayette or anything, but it's going to wobble, and it may it may wobble around 10 miles or so. Okay. And um, these are minor. These seem minor, and they are, but. The distance, of how a hurricane, the winds decrease from a hurricane very quickly, the most intense part of the winds. Now, the, the tropical storm force winds extend pretty far out, but those intense 150, 185 mile per hour wind gusts are very in a confined area. So that matters when you're trying to decide how close you're going to get to that. And that's why we're watching it and seeing how close it's going to get into the New Orleans metro, how much of the river parishes are going to take the, the hit, and of course, how much uh, Homa and Thibodeau are going to take the hit. They're going to take most of the hit, it looks like.